in the first Toy Story, it was so loved by audiences, and we, and, and to do a sequel to it, for me as a director, I, I have to look back at the original and respect every aspect of it. You know, it's the casting, it's the, the vocal performance, it's the animation, it's the look, the lighting, the design of the world, the music Randy Newman did, the sound Gary Rystrom did. All those things combined make Toy Story. So in doing a new one, we needed to, to really respect that and create the same world again. Without me, they'll go back into storage, maybe forever. Woody, you're not a collector's item. You're a child's plaything. You are a toy! For how much longer? One more rip, and Andy's done with me. And what do I do then, Buzz, huh? You tell me. We know who Woody is, and we know who Buzz is, and we know who Bo Peep is, but uh, the new characters, we didn't really, didn't really know them. <laughs> Okay, now, slow. The first couple weeks in animation, where we, were, where we were exploring these new characters, it was kind of like meeting people at a party. You like everybody else there, and you know, well, I'll probably like these people, too, because they're friends with my friends. <gasps> Sweet mother of Abraham Lincoln, the prospector! He'll want to meet you! We have some wonderful new characters in this film, Jesse and Bullseye and the Prospector and Al the Toy Collector. At the same time, we've also expanded the scope of the first film. The first film, for the most part, took place in Andy's room and in Sid's house with a brief little side trip to Pizza Planet. But in Toy Story 2, we're really all over the map. The anti-gravity sickness will wear off momentarily. Now, let's move! In Toy Story, we were very careful to design locations and, and in the story that were realizable, you know, five years ago technologically. And we're much freer now to kind of take the camera where we need it to go to tell the best story that we can. And so you'll see things in frame that you just couldn't see in Toy Story because we couldn't do them. When we came up with the original idea of Toy Story, about the notion of toys being alive, the original pitch was, it seems like, so far from what the, the final Toy Story was. But throughout the development, uh, from that original pitch through to the final product, there was so many great ideas that came out of it. You know, a lot of them made it into the first Toy Story, but a lot of them didn't. Two of the biggest losses, the two of the most difficult things to cut on Toy Story were the opening Buzz Lightyear cartoon idea and the idea of a nightmare of showing Woody's fears. And when we cut them out, they just felt like they were so accurate from a certain perspective about the life of toys and kids. Hey, Woody, you don't glow. I don't think I like you anymore. We found we were at a point where nobody was really getting the emotion of how much he feared that he was at the winters of his years. And that's when we just, well, geez, the nightmare. If you just tweak the nightmare to kind of to put it that way, um, it does exactly what we thought it would do for us in Toy Story 1. I don't want to play with you anymore. The story of Toy Story 2 is based a lot on my own experience. I'm a big toy collector, and a lot of them are like antiques or, you know, one-of-a-kind toys or prototypes that the toy makers have given me. Well, I have five sons. Four of them are little. They love to come to Daddy's work. Right? And they come into Daddy's office, and they look around, and it's like, oh, and they're just wanting to play with everything. And I'm sitting there, oh, no, that's, that's, no, no, you can't play with that one. Oh, no, you can't, here, you can play with that one. Ooh, no. I, and, and so I found myself just sitting there looking at myself and laughing. Because toys are manufactured, put on this earth to be played with by a child. That is the core, the essence of Toy Story, and the essence of Toy Story 2. You should never tangle with the unstoppable duo of Woody and Buzz Lightyear! Oh, no. Andy, let's go. Molly's already in her car seat. But, Mom, Woody's arm ripped. Oh, no. Woody is going through a completely different uh, life experience and learning process in this movie. He's learning about something that he didn't, didn't face in, in the first movie, and that is the fact that kids outgrow toys. And a day is going to come when Woody is not gonna uh, be played with anymore. Me! 
<laughs> What's the point in prolonging the inevitable? We're all just one stitch away from here to there. Yard sale. Yard sale! We spend a lot of time really plumbing the depths of, of a toy's psyche. You know, what, what, what matters to a toy beyond just being played with by kids? What are, some of, what are some of the things that toys are afraid of? What is Woody afraid of? How long will it last, Woody? Do you really think Andy is going to take you to college? Or on his honeymoon? Woody's afraid of Andy growing up and abandoning him. It's a theme that I think children can relate to. But for adults, uh, the film taps into a lot of themes, a lot of themes about being afraid of, of growing up and growing older, being afraid of your own kids growing up and moving away from home. What works so well about Buzz Lightyear in the first movie is he was deluded. And we faced a problem in the sequel because now he knows he's a toy. You know, he's coming down to earth. And that, that's what made him so funny. How do you keep him funny? And we had, that was an enormous challenge for us. Am I really that fat? Hoo-yah! Ow! What are you doing? You're in direct violation of code 6404.5, stating all space rangers are to be in hypersleep until awakened by authorized oh. personnel. No. <laughs> You're breaking ranks, ranger. Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. I've got an AWOL Space Ranger. Tell me I wasn't this deluded. No backtalk. I have a laser, and I will use it. Buzz and Woody are among the most beloved characters ever in, a, in, a, in an animated film. And I think part of why that happens is because they're created from the ground up. That you're not looking at real people. You're looking at created characters who become real. And they become real through their connection with your heart. I realize these characters live way beyond the boundaries of the film. Woody! Buzz! A few days after the movie came out, I was traveling with my family. Uh, we got off the plane, and there, just outside the gate, was a little boy, maybe four or five years old, and he was clutching a Woody doll. And the look on his face was that of so, he was so excited to show this to his dad, who was getting off the plane. And it touched me so deeply that, that this character that the little boy was holding doesn't belong to me anymore. It belonged to him. That was his Woody doll. I have a lot of respect for that. And so when we did um, Toy Story 2, I always thought of that little boy and knew that we had to make Toy Story 2 great for him and for all the people that really love these characters.